everyone, Tox from CritsHappen.com. Thanks for watching and welcome back. Today we're here with Critical Kicks, and I've got two games that are being delivered or about to be delivered right now, and one game that's about to be on Kickstarter. So let's talk first about Between Two Cities. This is a tile drafting and placement game designed by Matt O'Malley, or Matthew O'Malley and Ben Rossett, and it was produced and published by Stone Mayor Games. If you don't know who Stone Mayor Games is, it would be a surprise um, if you're doing anything with Kickstarter because Jamie Stegmeyer is very vocal about Kickstarter, has a great blog about it, but their company, Stone Mayor Games, does a phenomenal job. They do great designs, they do phenomenal components, and their Kickstarters are extremely well run. If you aren't familiar with them, I definitely highly recommend going to check out Stone Mayer Games. I have yet to be disappointed with any of their games. Their games are just absolutely fabulous. Very, very happy. Now, Between Two Cities extends that. Um, and, and it's a great word to use for it. Between Two Cities is a very interesting game. It is, at its core, a tile drafting and tile placement game. However, you're not drafting tiles for your city. This is a three to seven player game that is going to see you drafting tiles for your neighboring cities. Because at the end of the game, your score is the lowest of the two cities to your left and to your right. And that makes it very, very interesting. Because you're not drafting for you, you're drafting for your neighbors. But depending on how many people are around the table, there are neighbors to your neighbors who will be drafting for them as well. The thing that's really surprising to me about Between Two Cities is how socially engaging the game is. The first game we played was a full seven players, and we were all a little wonky about, okay, how do the rules work? What can I do? What can I not do? The game was super fast, literally with seven players on our first playthrough, explaining the rules and everything. It took about 40 minutes, which is amazing, considering there's three full rounds to the game. Very, very close game, too. It was within like two points from the winner to second place. But it was very exciting and very fun because what happens is you're drafting tiles, you're looking at your neighbors, and you're like, okay, I want that to, to benefit their parks, I want this to benefit their uh, you know, offices, and then all of a sudden your neighbors on the other side of them, or their neighbors on the other side of them, jump in saying, oh, but oh, you drafted this, I drafted this, we could combine up. Because there's a lot of interaction. You're allowed to talk with the neighbors of that city to see what did they draft and what are they going to put in it. So for example, if I'm here, uh, my neighbor is to my right, the neighbor to them is to their right, me and the neighbor to their right are drafting for that player's city, so we're going to be able to talk about where we want to put things. It was amazing. Even in that short amount of time, we were all talking to each other, we were all paying attention. There was a little bit of the Seven Wonders complex where you're not really 100% sure of what's going on across the board from you, but you don't have a lot of impact on that, so there is a lot of, okay, let's figure out what we can do here and then adjust to what's happening over there. And it was really, really fun. It actually felt a lot like Seven Wonders Light, but it is a very different game. You're, you're having to draft different styles and you're having to do it in a very unique way. Very, very happy with Between Two Cities, and in all honesty, the only downside to it is I think it might be getting lost with all of the excitement around Scythe and, and the Kickstarter that's going on right now. But if you have a chance, definitely check it out. Between Two Cities by Ben Rossett and Matthew O'Malley. So next up is a game that may be in your hands if you backed it right now. Uh, really depends on what you chose to do. Uh, this game is called Yashima. Now, this is, uh, I think the full title is Yashima Legend of the Kami Masters. This game is phenomenal. Period. We're done. <laughs> this, yeah, Yashima is easily one of my favorite Kickstarters of the year, if not the top Kickstarter of the year that I have received in hand. Now what I've got is just the base game, that's it right now. Um, there were a lot more things you could back, but they gave you an offer, it's from Greenbrier Games, and they gave you an offer that you could either get the base game shipped to you now and wait for the later stuff, or you could get it all shipped to you later when all the, all the goodies and all the extras get in. Um, Yashima is amazing. It is a miniature style skirmish game that puts you in the role of a kind of like a kung fu master. And there are different uh, auras or different fighting styles like the turtle and the tiger and the phoenix that you can combine with them. So in the base game you get four masters plus four different fighting styles. There's a lot of combinations just in and of that. 
but every game is extremely different. And the game is all based around using cards that act as multiple things. You're gonna have the option to use them as attacks, you're gonna have the option to use them as blocks, some of them will be used to determine initiative and how fast and who goes first, and some of them are gonna be used to delve into a tome. You have a tome of moves that you can use, and it becomes very interesting because you're given a lot of choices of what do I want to do? Do I want to go full on offense? Do I want to play setup for a later turn? Am I playing four players? Because this plays two to four players. And am I possibly setting my partner up for their move as well? Lots of really, really cool strategies inside of Yashima. Plus, I really love the fact that there are unique styles to each of these players. Some of them are wanting to put status effects on you and then combo off of those status effects, almost making it feel like a video game fighting style game. There are others that are slow building and chain things together and really combo centric and they're just very unique styles. I love the miniatures, I think they came out really, really good. I love the tiles and, and the artwork on the cards themselves. They've just done a great job of capturing what should be a very simple, fast, streamlined experience and putting it into Yashima. I love miniatures games, but for the most part, a lot of miniatures games take a lot of miniatures, they take a lot of rule books, they take a lot of rulers, they take a lot of time. Yashima, you can play a two-player game in literally 15 to 20 minutes if you know what you're doing. Probably more like a half hour though overall. And it does play two to four players, which is really cool because there's a lot of different strategies to explore if you're playing two players or if you're playing four players. For most of you that know me, who have been with me for the whole time here, WoW Miniatures was one of my favorite, if not favorite, games of all time. I loved the style and how everything came together on that. Yashima is the first game since WoW Miniatures to really make me feel like, wow, this is a solid miniatures skirmish game, and I really cannot say enough about it. This was done by Joshua Sprung and Tony Gelati, two great guys, and it's a design that I would definitely recommend to check out. So if you get a chance, check out Yashima Legends of the Kami Masters from Greenbrier Games. So that's two games that are delivering now or about to be delivered. Let's talk about a third game that's about to be on Kickstarter. Now I don't have a final date for this yet, but I'm very excited about this game and I'm very surprised by this game. I get a lot of people that ask me, can you take a look at my Kickstarter? Can you do a preview on it? Can you do something on it? And it's a multitude. The, the amount of Kickstarters that are out there are just unbelievable right now. When you think about the fact that two or three years ago there was like 20 projects in a year and now there's like 20 projects every week, the explosion is just massive. And keeping up with that is literally like a full-time job. So it's rare that something catches my eye in a way that's both artistic and gameplay unique that makes me get interested in something. So let's talk about Karma Ka. Karmaka is a game uh, made by Hemisphere Games. You might know them from a previous project called Osmos. Um, it is Eddie Boxerman, I think is how you say his last name, uh, and David Burke. And they are putting together this game, Karmaka, that is really a deck building game at its heart, but it has a very unique mechanic. So you start the game with a very small amount of cards, and you're trying to build yourself up the Karma ladder. You start at a certain level, and then at the end of your life, which is when you run out of cards from your deck and from your hand, you then have the opportunity to raise yourself up that karma chain or up that karma tree. In order to do that, you have to have a certain amount of karma value played into your deeds, which is what they're called. And it's interesting because what you get to do is you get to take a card from your hand and you either choose, do I put it into play for its point value to help me move up the karma chain, or do I play it for its ability? If I play it for its ability, there's a very unique mechanic in that I then have to offer it to my opponent. And they could take that for what's called their future life, which is essentially a second deck that will be used after they finish this life. If you take it into the context of the cards in your deck are your life, and when you run out, you are reincarnated, possibly higher up the karma chain, that's exactly what happens. So the deck building becomes a facet of, I'm gonna use this card and play it and use its ability, but you then have the opportunity to capture that card and use it on a future life or on a future round, which is very interesting. It's a deck building mechanic where you're almost deck building out of your opponent's deck. 
and it's very, very interesting because there's a lot of cards that you want to play that you're like, wow, this is going to help me right now. But if I do this, it's going to help my opponent later, and I don't want it to help them later. Maybe I should just play it for its strength. But it's not lined up to the colors that I'm focusing on for this life, so it might not actually help me in the long run. Okay, I need to play it for its ability. There's a lot of really interesting choices. And on top of it, it's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous beautiful, beautiful artwork. This is a uh, print and play, or not really a print and play, I guess. It's um, Ad Magic uh, is the service, very much like Game Crafter. It's kind of print on demand. It's a version from them, and it's not a final version. I've been very, very happy with it, though, in terms of how it looks, how it plays, and the uniqueness of it. Um, whether or not you believe in reincarnation and karma and all that, it's pretty hard to deny that this is a beautiful looking game. And the mechanics, I think, are interesting enough to where it just separates itself enough from the pack to be very unique and very different. So, if you're looking for something new, pay attention to Hemisphere Games. It's Karma Ka. It's I believe their website is karmaka-game or hyphen game.com. Uh, we'll put a link below in the YouTube channel though so you can check it out. Uh, and I would definitely be on the lookout for it. It's one that I'm definitely going to be looking for and looking forward to backing and seeing the final project on. So, that's it. The three games that we looked at today, once again, is a quick recap. Between Two Cities from Stone Mayer Games. Yashima from Greenbrier, Greenbrier Games, and Karmaka from Hemisphere Games. Let us know what you think. Are these games that you've kicked and you've backed and you've gotten and you've loved? Are these games you've never heard of and now you're more interested in? Or am I crazy and you think these games are terrible? Which they're not, trust me. But let us know. Leave a comment below on the YouTube channel. Of course, you can chime in on Facebook and Twitter uh, by searching Crits Happen or at our homepage at CritsHappen.com. But until I see you next time, thanks so much for watching. Keep rolling those dice, and we hope they're all crits.